This is a real-life account of spirit possession phenomena in China. The inhabiting spirits generated surges of electrical activities in the brains of three men, a father, and both his sons, triggering spine-chilling epileptic seizures. However, do the spirit have eyes? Yes. Using yes. mild epileptic nod, no. spirits answered no. a lot of questions. Thousands of conversations described a whole picture of spiritual realm and the spirits. These are unprecedented in the history of humanity. Now, it's time to bring a shock to your cognition. video, my father mentioned that whether souls can exist independently is based on one simple question. Do souls world has natural internet attributes? It is because that the arguments of those who denies the existence of souls are based on one principle. Human consciousness is the ancillary product of our brain. It vanishes as brain death. So, as a derivation of consciousness, Sure, do souls can't exist independently. Yeah, I remembered in last video that our brain can be compared to an old-fashioned computer. If there is not internet connection or removable storage devices to back up the data, then once the disk is broken, all the data and software inside would be damaged. That's true, but if the world where souls live has some kind of natural internet attributes. Which allow us to update and download our consciousness. Then it would be like a structure which is pretty common in our world, that is, SaaS, the underlying structure of many apps like Google Map. Once our consciousness can leave our body and be updated to cloud, then the pure consciousness would not vanish if our brain dies. Actually, that's the first requirement of soul's independent existence. Also, the most important foundation. Have you ever found any kind of like scientific evidence that maybe can prove what you said? The natural internet attributes. I mean, science experiments. Those been done by universities or institutes, not private. We now have four papers by well-known Chinese universities, really valuable. But unfortunately, we haven't found any English papers which has eco values. If anyone would help us find insane research of related topics, no matter what language it is, we would be greatly appreciated. Here we start with these four papers. They were all published on China Somatic Science. There are four same characters for these four articles. The first two forms a Chinese word, which means thought and consciousness. The third character means transmission, and the fourth means perception. The four characters as a whole means the topic of these four papers are all about the delivery and acceptance of thought and consciousness. Each paper demonstrates different experiments, and the purpose is to explore the intrinsic mechanism of consciousness transmission and the screen effect that plays a key role in the transmission process. Consciousness transmission sounds cool. Is it like this? People with a brainwave receiving cap transmitting information by electromagnetic signals? Totally not. There is not any equipment, but only extraordinary human function of the psychics. These papers were done by Shao Lai Sheng, Wang Boyang, and other researchers of China Fudan University. Actually, the papers are summary of hundreds experiments conducted between 1987 to 1991. Fudan University is one of the top five universities in China. Unfortunately, we couldn't find photos or any videos of the two main authors. What the consciousness transmission experiments be like? Can you introduce it to me briefly? All right, it is described like this. Two psychics, A and B. 
They were asked to stay in two rooms which spaced between 100 meters to 1,000 kilometers. Then the researchers sat a moment, like 8 a.m. In this moment, researcher C would pick up a note randomly from this pocket. There are many notes with different words and numbers within. The note was given to A then. The moment A got the note was recorded, and the moment is the time when experiment begins. In order to facilitate the presentation, I named the moment as T1, starting moment. After being read, the note would be placed in front of the psychic or be destroyed. Then the psychic would start to enter the hyper state. After about few minutes, sometimes ten minutes. The psychic A would form a rectangular screen like TV in this area of forehead, but inside the brain, middle of height. The message of notes is on the screen. Then it was sent out immediately. So the moment of the screen's appearance is the key point of consciousness transmission. It would be recorded by the psychic. We name it as T2, sending moment. After a few seconds or few hours. Another psychic B would also form a screen in forehead, the same place as A. The message sent by A is displayed on it. Then the moment of B's brain screen appearance would also be recorded. We name it as T3, receiving moment. Then researchers C and D on each side of the experiment would check the contents over the phone. Hundreds of experiments have done the same thing. Transmitting message with psychic spray without aid of any instruments. The whole experiment was designed to prevent cheating in any way. That's it. It sounds not sophisticated. Psychics had done all the works. How many psychics were involved in total? This is their names: Pang, Ji, Wan, Wu, Yuan, Huang, Xu. Yin, Jam, Xiao. Their ages are all around twenties, and they were all not well educated. Only at junior high school level, not students from Fudan University. It's weird. How did Professor Xiao and Wang find so many psychics? They didn't find them. They trained them. Professor Xiao and Wang have a training system which can turn a normal person into a psychic with extraordinary function for long period of time. Why I say long period of time? Cause unlike my brother who lost his bending spoon ability short after leaving the training course, those psychics can keep the ability for many years. So what's the conclusion? Does Soul's world really has internet attributes? Did the experiments succeed? Let's check the result. This is the first experiment record in the paper. The experiment was done in the physics building of Fudan University and Lushun Park, which is 3.4 kilometers away, in September 7th, 1989. This six-digit number was successfully sent by Xiao Xuelan at 6:40 p.m., the T2 sending moment, and this. Is the message Huang Guixiang received at 6:43, T3 receiving moment? It's correct. This picture of glasses was sent by Miss Wu. The T1 moment is half past six, and T2 moment is 6:41. And this is the message Mr. Pang received at T3 moment, 6:41. It's quite similar, almost the same. Look at this. They conducted Chinese word transmission experiments also at that day. All the transmission was succeeded. Well, I can't understand this figure. Many of their experiments are about Chinese word transmission. See, this one is done in November 18, 1990. The message was sent between Peking and Shanghai, with distance of 1,000 kilometers. The message contains a four digits, 9162. And four Chinese characters. One thousand kilometers. I can travel from Prague to Paris. This is the record of the experiment in November twenty-one, nineteen ninety. Also between Peking and Shanghai, of four digits, 
one nine six four, and four Chinese characters were transmitted successfully. And this one is the record on November twenty six, with a one thousand kilometer distance. Several Chinese characters were sent successfully. I don't know these words. Can those psychics transmit words that they don't know? Actually, I have the same question with you, but it has already been included in the experiments by those researchers. Let's check these records in 1991. On March 11th, sender Miss Wu sent Russians that she didn't know. Then receiver Mr. Pang wrote the same Russian that he didn't know yet. On March 12th, sender Miss Ying sent Korean that she didn't know. Receiver Miss Wu. Received the same Korean that she didn't know yet. On May 16th, sender Miss In sent Japanese that she didn't know, and receiver Mr. Pang received the same Japanese that he didn't know yet. So they can transmit words they don't know. I think I got it. The transmission is based on image format. Psychic can finish the transmission even they don't know the meaning of image. You are so smart. Then those great researchers concluded that image format is the basic consciousness transmission format in Soul's world. You see, it is like computer format requirements, and this is the core of what we said screen effect. Is it interesting? Wow, it's really unbelievable. Format requirements in consciousness transmission. Let's come back to our point. Soul's world has properties with internet-like sending, transmitting, and receiving function. Do you have any doubts about it now? No, I think those experiments had proved it already. Now my question is, how this Soul's world internet works? Next is about the mechanism of consciousness transmission. First, about format limitation. Here comes the question: Can physics send color image? Or they can just send black and white image. That's a good point. Just like TV, is it like those black and white TV century ago, or the color TV later? This is the experiment result. Um, it's a little bit confusing. Let me explain it to you. Word red, written in green pen. Word green, written in red pen. And word blue, written in yellow pen. The researchers want to see if the brain screen can show this complex content in color, and whether psychics would be misled by the message. The experiment succeeded. Receiver Miss Wu wrote down the same text with the same color pen, and this proved that the brain screen is a color screen, like modern TV. Is it possible to transmit some dynamic, continuous pictures? Like movies? That's also an important question. This sentence is the experiment content about this question. Can the brain screen transmit dynamic pictures like video, or just still pictures? So now I would make a representation of the research. There are two experiments. Both includes a clock. In the first one, they tied a small porcelain doll to the second hand of the clock. And in the second one, the porcelain doll was replaced by a matchbox. Since we can't find an old-fashioned matchbox and porcelain doll,、uh, then we use a little yellow square instead, like this. This video represents the sender's thoughts, a rotation process of second hand. And these two pictures are what receiver got. Well, so continuous pictures can't be transmitted. They can only deliver frames one by one, and the rate is very slow. That's why the receiver only got two pictures. The original video was forced a reduction in the number of frames. We can't draw conclusions so fast. There are other experiments. In March 18, 1991, psychic Miss In and Miss Wu sent out two long Chinese sentences, and psychic Miss G. And Mr. Pan received the correct message. However, the message were displayed like this in the brain screen. Well, it's continuous images this time. 
but it contradicts with the result before. What type of image can Soul's world transmit? I can't answer your question because here I'm no more experienced about what you asked in the papers. So, dear audience, for this contradictory result, what's your opinion? Please post your insights in the comments. So, the brain screen in Soul's world can indeed transmit visual message. What about audio message? For example, the clock you mentioned before. Could the transmission also carry the sound of that clock? That's a good question. You come up with the same idea with the designer again. <laughs> Let's see how experiment goes. This sentence describes the experiment design. Now we would make a representation. The sender sent out a piece of audio like this. We can't find the original audio, so we download one from internet according to the audio description in the paper. The first sound is produced by some baby toys. <laughs> it's hard to describe. The sender didn't know about it was made by toys. <laughs> The sound was played to the sender for half an hour, but nothing was sent successfully. Then they tried to send the sound of percussion of a Cooper Bells. And the sound of plastic clips hitting the desktop. Unfortunately, all those failed. After that, they played several random combinations of syllables Do, Re, Mi with piano. Failed again. Seems like sound is non-transferable. Wait, look at this text. They succeeded twice. What? Let's listen to this audio. It's analog to the original audio, a piece of sound of a turning clock. Receiver Miss Wu and Mr. Pam wrote down the same description on the paper. Sound of clock turning. How? It is declassified in the paper that sender Miss G actually sent a description of that sound. So it's also a text. No sounds were sent in fact. Well, so that's the same as before, only pictures were sent. Same things happen in the next sound transmission experiment. Here is the audio for transmission. This is sound of a train? After receiving the message of sound's description, two receivers wrote down the same text. A sound of mmm. Later, the sound of banging, getting louder and louder. So it's impossible to deliver the sound. Is there any experiments about taste or touch? No. To be precise, I haven't found anything about it till now. So can you explain me the mechanism of consciousness transmission? I just noticed that in the two sounds transmission experiments, there was one sender and two receivers. It looks like a 102 circuits. Not only 1202, there is no limitations for the amount of receiver. Here is an experiment done in August 13, 1991. Sender, Miss G. Receiver, Miss Wu. Mr. Pound and Miss It. The transmission was succeeded. Well, I am wondering how receivers got the message. Is it like email? The sender sent the message to some kind of address like IP address of receiver? Mm, it's not very accurate. The most likely is blog or Instagram. There is a virtual square of information, and there is no address concept in Soul's world like email account. The experiments shown that only receivers need to know the identity, but senders do not need to know who receiver is. They just need to send a message to Soul's Road, uh, just like post your message on blog. That's cool. 
the receiver only needs to remember the face of sender. Then the transmission channel is established. The transmitted message can also be forwarded. For example, A sent message to B, and B sent the same message to C. C would not know that the message source is A. It's really like an internet. Is there anything else like data center of root server in this consciousness internet? My dear audience, this clever young lady has just gave me another difficult question. What's your opinion? How can a receiver locate and identify the consciousness packet of the sender from the consciousness information square? Please comment your insights below. What about the transfer rate? That's a key problem. Actually, it has a lot to do with the Stargate project of USA. In fact, Stargate project failed at last. One of the main reasons is the transfer rate. Really? It is found that if the distance between sender and receiver is less than 100 kilometers, then the transfer rate would be fast. The whole process would be done within seconds to minutes. For example, the first experiment from physical building of Fudan University to Lushun Park, 3.4 kilometers in total. T2 sending moment is 6.41. T3 receiving moment is 6.41 almost the same time. This figure lists 10 short distance consciousness transmission experiment data within 100 kilometers. Among all the T2 and T3 moments, the interval is between 10 seconds to 2 minutes 21 seconds. And this is the data of four successful transmission from Peking to Shanghai in November 26 and November 27, 1990. Two fast transmissions only took 7 and 18 minutes, but the two slow ones took about 8 hours. 8 hours? It's far slower than the former two transmissions. With our internet, it only needs few seconds to send a message from US to China. One of the most important targets of this target project is sending consciousness commands to nuclear submarine deep inside the ocean. But you see, with such a high latency, is there any military value? It's worthless, so unreliable. There is also another fatal problem for military use, the transfer success rate. Look at this figure. These are data from 22 consciousness transmission experiments conducted between Beijing and Shanghai in November 1990. 15 were succeeded. The success rate is only 68%. What about the rest part? Is it because the data packet was lost during the transmission? The paper didn't answer the problem. But I have a question for you. Now we know that the soul space internet has relative low transfer speed and success rate, far behind our internet. So, where it comes from? Created by advanced alien civilizations? Or just the natural products of soul space? Well, now I tend to believe it's some kind of natural products. Okay, here is an important corollary among all the experiments. Since the message, text, and image left the sender's brain through the brain screen at T2 moment. I mean, can we deduce that consciousness can exist independently outside our brain? Then it would not die even our brain dies. And at T3 moment, the thought arrived at another brain is that means the consciousness life, so, can go into other people's brain, then affect the person's thought, that is, parasitism. I think your reasoning holds. It's two sides of a coin that exist at the same time. If we admit the existence of souls, then we must admit the existence of parasitism. Well, now I have a question about the brain screen. It seems to be the gateway to the soul world from a real world. Is there any more introduction about it in the research? Unfortunately, no. The screen is actually a channel between two worlds, but there are more channels too. We will discuss these channels in series 2-2. Sorry, suddenly I have a doubt. Is it possible that the researchers faked it? That's an important experiment. 
For the two main researchers from Fuda University, I think it's impossible. Let's take the transmission experiment between Peking and Shanghai as a case. The experimental partner in Beijing is the 507 Institute of the Commission of Science, Technology, and Industry for National Defense, which we have shown that in 113 series. It is impossible for 507 Institute to cheat because of political reasons, and the project is also for military submarine communications. It matters a lot, and this cannot be faked. So, from the perspective of a human being, it's impossible to fake. However, if we take so parasitism into consideration, then it is entirely possible for so to fake an experiment. Fake experiment? By parasitic souls? What do you mean? We have proved the widespread existence of souls parasitism in one to one series. It affects people in every way. When there are human activities related to souls world, souls would particularly willing to participate in it. The first stage of our story happened in 2018 to 2020. Prove this. So, for all the paranormal research, we need to consider and doubt. Whether parasitic souls participated in it, it can be sure that experiments which involve souls are completely impersonal and unreal. Reasonable. What about the experiments in this video? Well, I think they were not interfered by souls. Why you say that? Based on our experience, if we want to check whether souls have participated in experiments, we have to consider the experimental situation. For the transmission experiment, there are several features can exclude the possibilities of souls participation. First, psychics transfer thought through brain screen. In most cases, it is the soul of the psychic's own body which is functioning when the brain screen appears. Parasitic souls do not use brain screen. For example, when my brother bending the spoon. There was not a brain screen. It is because his special ability is realized by the superior parasitic soul on his teacher. Second, the speed at which abilities are acquired. This is the summary of psychic training by Professor Shaw from December 1987 to April 1988. We see that psychics were trained gradually. Unlike my brother, he mastered the ability in a very short time. So the extraordinary function in the transmission experiment was from the souls of psychics, not parasitic souls. As you said, the appearance of brain screen determines whether parasitic souls have participated in, right? That's right. Third, as far as my father and I know, only super advanced parasitic souls or very few psychics, like Yuri Geller, can control different human bodies thousands of miles apart. 99.999 percent of souls can't do that. The transmission experiment between Beijing and Shanghai, with 1,000 kilometers apart, succeeded in different psychics. It ruled out 99.999 percent of parasitic souls interference. Fourth, parasitic souls have ability of transferring audio, that is, auditory hallucinations. More than that. In terms of motivation to participate, they didn't have to make the visual experiment work, and the auditory experiment fail all the time. The failure in auditory experiments would not fit their motivation, since they do everything just for fun. That's all. Fifth, details. Countless times, my father saw through the low-level so Huian's tricks. It was details. All details. There is an important point in this experiment. Once they transmitted such a picture of a tiger, we got this picture from the internet. It is similar to the black and white picture in the article. The sender successfully transmitted the colorful image to the receiver, but the sender's description of it is completely different with receivers. The two textual descriptions should be exactly the same if the experiment is controlled by parasitic souls, just like that in the train sound transmission experiment. This happened repeatedly with the transmission of these two images. The receiver and sender describe the butterfly and bird in completely different words. 
details are the most important indicator of whether or not a parasitic soul is involved. Like you said, souls fraud is so common. Actually, near-death experience and all research about it are all participated and falsified by souls. Although you have only shown a little of soul world, I can already feel that this is just the tip of the iceberg. What an unknown new continent. That's where our second stage of life will exist. I hope there is more research. Ah, I have a last question. Both Elon Musk and Google are working on uploading human consciousness to internet. Human beings can be immortalized on the internet in form of conscious life forms. So will there be any conflict or contradiction between the immortality on internet and the existence of souls? In fact, I have discussed this topic with my father. Let's start with soul. The soul me and the physical me would have consistent memories, even the same way of thinking, part of the same joy and sorrow. But actually, they are already two different species. Maybe the real-world internet can upload human memories in the future, but it's hard to upload joys, sorrows, and personal preference for thinking. Then, the digital me and the physical me are far more different than the previous soul me. Also, souls live in the soul's world, which is a natural space, just like the ocean and the universe. Each individual soul is free. But if consciousness life lives on the hard disk and memory of a supercomputer of a big company or country, then the individual is not free. Kind of like living in the matrix or like in cyberpunk world, digital souls are imprisoned in the big company Arasaka server, Migoshi. So, the difference between digital soul and natural soul is quite big. I have an interesting idea. If we follow the idea of mechanized uploading consciousness, then my soul and the uploaded digital me appears simultaneously in the future. Will they face off in court over my inheritance? Who deserves this legacy and who is the real me? Does anyone interested of investing a sci-fi about it? My dear audience, can you answer her question? Now we have come to the end. The four Chinese articles mentioned before are in the attachment documents of this video on our homepage. I hope you can download it and read it carefully. Join us, explore the world of souls.